So you just got your Canon R5, and now you gotta figure out how to shoot with this thing. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the basics of using your Canon R5 for video. First off, you need to charge the battery. This is a newer battery, it has a higher capacity. It still fits in the older cameras, so you're fine there. You can use the included charger, just flip out the prongs here, plug it into an outlet, and slip the battery in. This will probably take maybe two or three hours to charge. The next thing you're gonna need is media. If you wanna record in the higher frame rates or in 8K RAW, you're going to need a CF Express Type B card. The SD card slot isn't fast enough for the higher bit rates. Now these CF Express cards are pretty expensive. I bought a 128 gigabyte Sony Tough card. It's one of the recommended cards for the camera and it costs $220. And if you go up to a 512 gigabyte, those are around five or $600. For the CF Express Type B card, you wanna make sure it has a high enough read and write speed. There are certain brands of cards that are recommended over others. So Sony, SanDisk, Delkin, and ProGrade, these are recommended brands. They have cards that have sustained read and write speeds that will work with all the frame rates and resolutions on this camera. When you get enough accessories for your camera, you might want to invest in a cage. Now I believe SmallRig makes some of the best cages. This one here is really nicely made. It's lightweight, it fits the camera super nice. It doesn't block any of the ports or the connections or the buttons. And the way it feels in your hand, it almost feels like it's part of the camera. It has a lot of mounting points across the top and the sides. There's quarter 20s, there's 3 8 16 with RE locating pins, and there's a cold shoe mount on the left side of camera. On the bottom, it has an Arca Swiss plate, so you can slide that right into a standard photography tripod. This one's also pretty clever because it has two locating pins on the bottom that interface with the camera so that the camera won't twist in the cage. It feels very secure. The Canon R5 has a new mount called the RF mount. If you're like me and you have a lot of lenses that have an EF mount, then you want to get an adapter like this called the EF to R adapter. It'll let you put all of your native EF mount lenses onto this camera. Not only that, you'll have the same autofocus, stabilization, and aperture control as you would on a native EF mount camera. Let's take a look inside the menu and get set up to record video. When you turn your camera on for the first time, it'll be in stills mode, so we need to get it over to video mode. The way you do that is you hit the mode button on top, and then you press the info button, and you can see we now have video modes here. So aperture priority, manual, custom modes. I'm just gonna choose a custom mode and now we can see we can adjust our shutter speed, our ISO, and our F number. And then if we go into the menu, you wanna scroll all the way over to the camera, and right there on number one, we have record quality. And this is where we can set our resolution and frame rate. So if I go in here, you can see by scrolling this wheel, I can change what parameter I'm changing, scrolling this wheel changes the option. So this is 4K DCI, this is 4K UHD, this is HD, and over here we have 8K UHD and 8K DCI. So I'm gonna keep it at 4K DCI. I'm gonna scroll down, let's see, we got 23, 24, 29, and 60. I'm gonna keep it at a common 23,976. It's what this video is being shot at. If I go down one more, we have all I and IPB. Now IPB is going to be a little more compressed, a little smaller file sizes than all I, but it's a little more difficult to play back. And especially with this camera, because of its codec, uh, it's especially hard to play back. So I'm gonna choose all I, excuse me, right there. Let's hit okay. And now we're set. Now, if you're using a manual focus lens, you'll find right away that you won't be able to record either stills or video unless you change a menu option. So let's jump out of this menu and then we scroll over to the uh, yellow section, excuse me, to the orange section. And if I scroll this wheel, I can change numbers. And then right down here, release shutter without lens, you gotta turn this on. If this is turned off, you won't be able to shoot stills or video with manual focus lenses. Now this is an electronic lens. This is a nifty 50 plastic fantastic, an old Canon 50 millimeter lens. So it'll work just fine even if, even if this was set to off. I'm gonna leave it on, that way I can use any lens I want with the camera. Now to get back to stills mode, all you have to do is hit mode, hit the info button, and you can see 
Now we have stills modes here, shutter priority, aperture priority, manual, bold, custom modes, etc., etc. Let's make sure we're in our video mode. Now let's go into 8K RAW. Let's see how we can get that. So let's jump right into our menu. And again, we're going to go find the camera menu, which is the first option here. And then right in here, the first option, first page, movie record size. So let's scroll our wheel over here to 8K DCI. We see there's a slight difference in the horizontal size, but not the vertical size between these two. I like choosing the DCI mode. That way I get the widest shot I can. If I want to crop in and move it left to right, I can. So I like using that. And then I'm going to keep it at 23976. And then right here, though, you notice that, oops, excuse me, boom, raw. If I select that, now I'm recording an 8K raw. Now there's another setting we want to look at here. Let me back out of this to this menu here and go over a couple. Down here on page three, Canon log settings. And then right there, Canon log on. By default, raw doesn't have a picture profile. But by setting this in camera, it's in the metadata, and so your post-processing software will know what mode you were shooting in. In this case, it's going to be Canon Log 3. That's the only mode that Canon offers in this camera at this time. Now, if you were in a different mode, let's say you were in, excuse me, let's say you weren't shooting RAW, you could just be shooting all I. And then if you were in here and you turned off your Canon log, what that means is the camera is now going to be recording in H.264 in only 8-bit color, which isn't very good. We definitely want to keep the 10-bit by having Canon log turned on. But let's say you didn't want to record in Canon log, you wanted to record in a more natural picture profile, then you can scroll over to page one and by turning on in here this 4K HQ mode, Scroll down right there. This will also record in 10-bit. Now, you've probably heard about the dreaded overheating with the Canon R5. Well, this is one of the modes that introduces some of that overheating, so you need to be aware of that. It'll start giving you a countdown timer telling you mm, you only have this much time remaining to record. And remember, this is a touch screen, so you could use the touch screen interface and it's much easier to use than trying to figure out which button to use here, which dial to use. Uh, I can't use the touch screen right now because I'm running an output so you can see the screen from the camera. But otherwise, you'd be able to use the touch screen. And it actually works really, really well. And you can see here I'm, I'm too underexposed, so I would change my ISO maybe. I could lower my, my shutter or my aperture. And that's looking a little bit better. It's important to understand how to set the white balance in camera. If you're not shooting in RAW, you need to get that right in the camera, otherwise your colors could be really far off and you might not be able to bring them back to something that looks good. So let's jump into the menu. And under the camera icon, we want to scroll over until we see the page three here, white balance. Now they give you a bunch of options in here. We have auto white balance. We have daylight, shade, cloudy, tungsten, white fluorescent, flash, custom, and Kelvin. This lets you set the Kelvin temperature specifically. For a lot of instances, you can get away with using auto. Auto white balance in cameras like this is actually really, really good. The only problem with it is it'll shift if you're pointing at something that's different colors, that white balance might shift, and you'll notice that in your video, and it doesn't look very good. It doesn't look very professional to have your white balance shifting all the time. So you wanna lock it in. Now, obviously, if you're outside, you can just set it to daylight. That's a really good choice. Depending on your lighting, if you're inside and you're using tungsten light, or say you have LEDs that are more closer to 2700 or 3200 Kelvin, as opposed to 5000 plus Kelvin, then you could use the tungsten setting, and that would also work really well. Now, if you want to have the best white balance setting, you want to use custom. And how this works in Canon cameras is, you want to take a picture of something like a piece of paper, and then once you have that picture, you can go here, and then you have to select that image in your camera in order to uh, white balance the camera. It's kind of a clunky way of doing it. Um, other camera systems like Panasonic do this much, much better, but that's how they do it in the, in the Canon world. Otherwise, you can dial it in specifically, 
So here you could you could just set your Kelvin temperature. If you happen to know, say you have some lights that are a specific temperature, you could dial that in here. Otherwise, you could try using white balance and you can switch between different modes here. White priority versus ambience priority. You'd want to experiment with this to see which gives you the best results. As we can see, that's probably not the right white balance for this scene because I'm shooting with uh, tungsten temperature light bulbs. So let's turn this down to say 3200. See how that looks. It looks a little bit better, a little more natural, a lot less yellow or orange. Now if I try auto, let's see how auto looks. And see how auto looks pretty much the same as the 3200 setting, which tells me I was pretty close with that setting. For the most natural look, you're going to have your shutter speed set to twice your frame rate. So since I'm at 23976, twice that would be around 48. But this camera doesn't have a 48 setting. So what I'm going to do is set it to 50. And that'll give me a motion blur that looks pretty natural. The one of the most important things is your ISO setting. If you have it too high, you're going to get a lot of noise. So if, you, if you're finding yourself having to turn that up, you need to find a brighter scene. You need to maybe add more lights because you're just too dim. Or you could also try to lower your aperture to give your shot more light. 400 and 800 uh, have about the same quality as far as noise performance. So don't be afraid to switch between 400 and 800. But if you go above that, you'll start seeing more noise the higher you go. One feature I think is important to look at and we should understand how to use are the custom modes. So as you can see, if I press mode here, we have custom one, two, and three. And what these do is it lets you save all of the settings for this mode. And that's really handy, especially when you have a scene set up and say you have your white balance set. If you don't save it, when the camera turns off automatically or if you power off, it'll lose those settings. So you definitely want to know how to use these modes. So let me show you here. Let me set up our shot. So I'm going to open up my aperture, aperture a bit more, get a little, little bit better exposure, put my ISO at 800. OK, and that's looking pretty good. So let's go into our menu. And I'm going to scroll over to this section here, the yellow section. Now, by default, you're going to be over here on page one. But let's scroll to page five. We can see the second option, custom shooting mode. Hit Enter and hit Enter here on register settings. And then custom shooting mode, I'm going to set this to 1, hit OK. And now it's just saved all of my settings into custom mode 1. And that's really great. So for example, say I want to have a couple different things set up here. I want to have this one set up in, uh, I think I set this in 4K DCI. And say I want to have a setting that is 8K. OK, maybe I want to do raw. So, boom, AK raw, right? So I'm going to save that to a different setting. Let me jump back over to my yellow menu, page five, custom shooting mode, register settings. I'm going to save it to number three, C3. Hit OK. So now I have two different modes set up in here. And all I have to do is hit mode and scroll to, to custom three, which is right there. And now I'm in 8K raw. If I hit mode again, Go to 1, now I'm in 4K H265, and it's just that simple. And we see that I can power off my camera, and then when I power it back on, my settings are still the same. And I can switch back over to my custom 3, and now I'm in 8K RAW again. We can see it in the menu here. Boom, 8K RAW. So that's super convenient to have these custom modes. Now the last piece of the puzzle is you need to know how to expose your image with this camera. It doesn't have waveform monitor, it doesn't have false color, it has a histogram but that's pretty useless, you just don't know what it's telling you. But it does have zebras, so let's look at the zebras in here. If we dig into the menu, we can see under page 7 on the camera, down here we have zebra settings. So let's go into that, I have them turned on, you can have two zebras set up, I'm just going to use one. Now for Non-log, for when you're not using the Canon log, you want to have this set to 100%. Well, actually not 100%. You see how it stops? 95% is actually kind of a bug in this camera. If you set this to 100, which it's not allowing me to do it right now, 
I think I did it in the past, like that one does, it doesn't actually show you that. It won't show you zebras at 100%. So 95% is where you want to set this. And let's see if I can get a, an image of what that looks like. So I'd have to really crank my exposure here. Let's drop the uh, F number. And if I point it at something bright, like there's a light over here. Uh, it's hard to see, but those are actually zebras in there, letting me know that that's overexposed. Let's go back over here. Autofocus is pretty good. And let's change our exposure back. Now, when, I'm, when I switch to my uh, memory mode 3, this is 8K Canon log. With Canon log, you want to have this set to 80%. That's the clipping point for Canon log, for C log in this camera. So let's see if I can. Yep, clipping. And the exposure is relatively the same as it was under the uh, non Canon log which tells us uh, we're right on with our zebra settings. So that way you know at least when you're clipping your signal and you can judge whether that's too hot or not. Um, this camera doesn't have a massive dynamic range. It does a decent job, but until Canon gives us uh, Canon Log 2 instead of Canon Log 3, your dynamic range is going to be slightly limited. So you, you definitely wanna watch your zebras. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please hit that like and subscribe button and hit that little notification bell if you wanna know when I post my next video. I'll have more camera equipment reviews coming up and I'll be reviewing a couple of global shutter cameras in the future. I think you might find that interesting. So I'll see you then.